the battle for Militopol is set to happen in the near future, and most likely this will be the battle of the century, which will determine the fate of the entire south of Ukraine. And in case Russians fail, which most likely they will, they do have a plan B, or I better call it a Hail Mary, but to be honest, this will only make them lose even faster. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and see some most recent footage. And our first video comes to us somewhere close to Krakow, located in Poland, where we can see the NATO tanks Abrams being transported closer to the borders with Ukraine. In addition to that, the US gave two more NASAMS air defense systems to Ukraine. And then Italy has also been talking about sharing their own air defense systems with Ukraine as well. As you can see, right now Ukraine is primarily focusing on building the air defense systems across the entire country. And one of the main reasons to do this is whenever Ukraine launches its ultimate counteroffensive, it is to protect its territory from the retribution of Russia, which most likely will be shelling the territory of the country. Something similar already happened not that long time ago, whenever Ukraine attacked several airfields in Russia, such as the Engels airport in Saratov region, and several days later Russia did a mass attack against Ukraine. And by the way, speaking about the Engels airbase, we do have the consequences of a Ukrainian attack which happened a couple of days ago. And as a result of this, Ukrainians reported that they were able to damage 5 to 95 Russian bombers, 17 soldiers were eliminated, and the radio tower was also destroyed. This was not the first, and most likely it's not going to be the very last attack of Ukrainians against military targets of Russians on their own territory. But rest assured, even the US acknowledged that these are the legitimate military targets, which most likely means that there will be no much escalation. And once again, the worst thing Russians can do at this very moment is to continue destroying the energy infrastructure of Ukraine. And right here we can see the differences in the night sky above Kiev back in January 2022 and November the same year. As you might have noticed, the combat activities between two countries, for better or worse, significantly slowed down recently. And one of the potential reasons for this, it is because maybe the winter holidays are coming. But I'm pretty positive that in the beginning of next year, the fighting will resume, and most likely we will see some key and major events happening. And if you don't want to miss any of these updates as soon as they start happening, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, because from time to time I'm doing some polls on my stories, and I'm very curious to see what you think. Alright, and before I talk about some pretty important things that are happening right now in the south, let me give you a very quick update from the east. And first of all, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, both Russians and Ukrainians continue their combat activities along Svatovy Krimina Road. And Ukrainians reportedly started to push even harder against Krimina. At the same time, the main focus of Russians, as always, was next to Bakhmut and Avdiivka, and they also did some combat activities on the outskirts of Donetsk city. At this very moment, Russians are putting their maximum effort and giving pretty much everything they have to try and advance closer to Bakhmut. And as you can see from this video, this is basically unfortunately the current condition of the majority of the territory of this city. But despite all the efforts by Russians, Ukrainians are repelling the majority of these attacks, which only allows Russians to advance several meters per day. And if you remember from my previous video, the Wagner private mercenary company, as well as just the regular Russian soldiers, are trying to slow down the pace of their attacks to pretty much stall the combat activities around Bakhmut. And one of the main reasons why would they want to do this is so that they have enough time to regroup their forces, bring resupplies, and then launch the offensive once again. Which basically means that most certainly Ukrainians cannot let them do this, 
and if possible, they need to strike when the enemy is at its lowest point. And speaking about Ukrainians, like mentioned previously, their main focus at this very moment is against Svatovia and Kremina. And once again, if you remember from my previous episode, it has been reported that some uh, local Russian <laughs> quote quote authorities have been spotted retreating from Svatovia all the way to Luhansk, which pretty much is one of the earliest signs about their upcoming total withdrawal. At the same time, as of right now, Ukrainians are actively pushing against Kremina. And in case they are successful at recapturing these key cities, Svatovi and Kremina, they will be able to establish the control over this highway. Which basically means that the resupplies of Russians from the north to another key cities, Lysychansk and Severodonetsk, will be pretty much very complicated. And in case Ukrainians decide to proceed further, and I mean <laughs> as they should, most likely the next major city on their way to be liberated will be Starobilisk. And if they succeed here as well, even more logistics of Russians will be severely disrupted. Which ultimately means, in the best case scenario, that Ukrainians will be able to split Luhansk and Donetsk and set the stage for the further total liberation of this whole region. And I mean, <laughs> okay, so what is the response of Russians? Well, according to Anna Malyar, the deputy minister of defense of Ukraine, Russians want to get closer to the administrative borders of Donetsk region by the end of this year, which by the way is in only in three days. And to help you visualize what they mean, this is the territory that Russians are planning to capture in only less than 72 hours. And I mean, if all of us wish them good luck right now, I don't think this will help them either. But I mean, if we take a look at this map, which shows us the changes in territorial control, I mean, yeah, we can see that Russians advanced a little bit. And yes, I mean, a little bit. So that's the start, right? Mm, but okay. As always, I wish I can show you a little bit more footage that I did today, but unfortunately, due to ongoing demonetization, I don't think I can show any photos and videos. So for this reason, I uploaded some of it to my Discord, and the rest will be available on my Patreon. And if you want to access all the footage from today's episode, as well as show support to the channel, the links will be down below. Alright, and before we talk about this uh, battle of the century, let me also give you a very quick update from the south. And first of all, according to the same report, Russians are attempting to send small reconnaissance groups to collect the intelligence data from the right side of Dnipro river. But then according to Natalia Huminyuk, Ukrainians are also responding by attacking Russian positions on the left side of Dnipro. But what makes them different is that the intensity of these attacks increased recently, which most likely means we might see finally some results and consequences in the near future. And at the same time, unfortunately, there has been even more attacks of Russians against the civilian infrastructure of Ukraine. And as you can see right here, for example, we have the picture of a destroyed hospital in Kherson city. And as we move to the west, to the city of Odessa, we have a picture of a packaged water. And what makes this specific picture so interesting is that it allegedly came from the Russian flagship Moskva which was sunk in the beginning of this year. And then as we move to Odessa, there is even more evidence that Russians are bringing their forces to this region. Oh, and yeah, by the way, speaking about this region, today Vladimir Putin called an 8-year-old girl from Zaporozhye and he asked her to send him cucumbers. He was then asking how is she doing, how are her parents are doing, if they have enough food to eat, things like this, and asking what about her most desired Christmas or New Year wishes. And then the girl said is that she wants so much to visit Crimea. Which basically now begs the question whether this was even a girl on the other side of the phone and not someone like Minister of Defense Sergei Shaigu. And since we started talking about Putin <laughs> and some of his uh, ridiculous statements, here is what he said a couple of days ago. 
The first thing he mentioned is that the main goal of Russia is to end this special military operation as soon as possible. And I mean, why would you even start it in the first place then? The second thing he mentioned is that Russia never declined peace talks, because every single war sooner or later ends with the negotiations. And as always, he blamed Ukraine for not ending this war. And the third thing Putin mentioned is that among other goals, the goal of Russia is to protect people in Ukraine. And I guess in order for him to do this, you have to destroy the half of the energy infrastructure of the country and eliminate more than 100,000 of your own people. And then Putin concluded that approximately 99.99% of Russians will do everything possible to protect the interests of their own motherland. And I mean, I guess okay. Let's not just talk about this upcoming battle of the century, the battle for Militopol. As you might already know, Russians are now actively building the defenses in the Zaporozhye region, specifically around Tokmak area. And at the same time, big convoys of Russian military vehicles have been spotted driving from Mariupol all the way to Militopol. At the same time, slowly but surely, for the last several weeks, Russians have been retreating from Kherson region and their main directions were to go to Crimean Peninsula, deeper inside Kherson region and to Zaporozhye region, once again to Militopol. Which pretty much with the highest degree of certainty shows you that they are preparing to defend this city because they do consider it very important. And at the same time, Ukrainian partisans have already been demonstrating its activities inside this city, plus Ukrainian forces have been trying to advance closer to Tokmak and to the west of Orikhiv. And all of this pretty much means that the next major battle, the battle of the century, the battle for Militopol, will most likely happen in the near future, most likely somewhere in the beginning of next year. And now the main question is, why is this city is so important? Well, to begin with, it is located on the intersection of the major roads in the south. And as long as Russians control the city, they are able to send reinforcements back and forth between the south and the east. But as soon as Ukrainians can recapture this city, this will obviously severely disrupt the logistics of Russians in this area. And as soon as ultimate liberation of Mykolaiv, Kherson and at least a part of the Zaporozhye region happens, this will completely separate Crimean Peninsula from the rest of occupied Ukraine. And as a result, Ukrainians will be able to bring their high Mars closer to the borders with the peninsula, which will put Putin's beloved Crimea in great danger. Because in the end, I am pretty positive that the events surrounding Crimean Peninsula will start happening only in the very final stages of this war. So pretty much yes, as you can see, Russians in the east are critically exhausted and are barely advancing. The upcoming battle of the century, the battle for Militopol, will most likely not going to be in favor of Russia. That is why, reportedly, they might attempt the last case scenario. And this last case scenario means is to invade from Belarus. But let me tell you what, without trying to smile too much, <laughs> this is the most absurdly ridiculous plan of Russians in this war. As you might already know, for the last several weeks, Russians indeed or bringing their soldiers and equipment to the border with Ukraine, and they were even doing some kind of trainings. And most likely, all of this was done in order to create the illusion that something is going to happen in the northern borders between Belarus and Ukraine. Because as for now, according to the majority of military experts, there are two reasons why Russians are doing this. The first reason is to once again create the illusion that something is happening, and the second reason is, even worse, is to actually invade Ukraine from the north. And let's uh, really quick talk about this first reason. <laughs> first, 
is that the Russians are creating the illusion on the activity on the border with Ukraine. And the main assumption here is that uh, this will make Ukrainians to bring their forces to this border. But I mean, if pretty much almost <laughs> everyone on the internet already knows that most likely the invasion is not going to happen, obviously Ukrainians are not reacting to this almost at all. Even the head of the defense intelligence of Ukraine, Kirill Budanov himself, he mentioned that the chances of Russians invading from Belarus are extremely low. And the reason for this, it is because they simply do not have the capabilities, equipment and vehicles. Which are also in a very big demand in the east of Ukraine right now. That is why obviously they cannot spare more of its vehicles and equipment to open another front line. But I mean, okay, what if Russians are brave enough? Or what if their military commanders, they force them to invade anyways, despite the human life cost? What will happen next? What do you think? Do you think that the Russian soldiers who barely have any progress right now, neither in the east nor in the south, do you think they will just uh, walk across the entire Ukraine starting from the north? And I mean, obviously, the answer is absolutely no. Because as soon and if Russians do decide to cross the border, in this case, I mean, okay, yes, Ukrainians will bring their forces to meet them right at the border. With the only difference is that Ukrainians will be much more prepared and they will have a bigger actual combat experience. And because of this, I think it is pretty obvious is that Russians have absolutely no chances at invading from Belarus and opening a brand new front line. But I mean, you never know, because Russians might actually attempt this <laughs> and most likely fail within a couple of days. And if you don't want to miss these events as soon as they start happening, once again, just please subscribe to my channel. It only takes one click. And if you want to support my work due to ongoing demonetization, please consider becoming my channel member, use a PayPal link or become my Patreon, where you'll receive early access to the additional content. You can find all the other useful links to the right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, Tradishi, and see you tomorrow.